What's up everyone, my name is Markhawk, and right now we're doing a quick side-by-side -side with Lettuce's Anamorphic X GoPro Adapter on a Hero 3 Plus Black Edition versus a Hero 3 Plus Black Standard Edition Lens. Now, you can use any of these quick links to jump to a section you're curious about, otherwise sit back and we'll start playing them all in just a second. Alright, let's get to it. So we're going to start off with the most common GoPro setup, 1080p, 30 frames per second wide. Now the only difference here is we have the Lettuce Anamorphic Lens Adapter hooked up to this camera. You're going to get a lot more information on the left and right side of your screen, and we're going to squish in some of that information so things are kind of distorted. Now if you look on the right, we have the standard GoPro Hero 3 without the Lettuce Anamorphic Adapter at the same settings. If you compare the two, you're going to notice you have a lot more information at the sides of the screen. And on the bottom we have the lettuce anamorphic lens adapter with the fisheye distortion removed and then we're going to take it and we're going to stretch it out the width by 1.33 and this is going to give us the proper conversion rate so our circles are purple uh, perfect our squares are perfect everything is in its proper perspective So when we start filming in Super View mode, we actually run into some cool unique properties. What it's going to do with the Lettuce Anamorphic Lens Adapter is it's actually going to reverse a lot of the distortion that Super View normally applies to your footage. So if you notice right away, our circle on top of the building is a perfect circle. Our square with the G on it is a perfect square. This is the Lettuce Anamorphic Adapter actually reversing some of the distortion that Super View generically has. When we look at the Super View footage compared to a normal GoPro Hero 3 wide, it's actually kind of spot on. It's actually a little better. You'll notice the G again on the regular GoPro footage is actually a little squish, and we have a lot more information, but we have those edges to deal with on the anamorphic lens. We'd have to either scale up or crop the image to get rid of those, which is kind of a bummer, but again, we don't really have to do a ton of the work. Now when we start to compare it against the normal Super View mode, we're going to notice that the anamorphic lens still has a ton more information on the left and the right, though the Super View does get a little more information on the bottom, but it's just a night and day difference. So let's say you look at the Super View anamorphic lens footage and you go, I want to remove some of that lens distortion. What we have here is kind of an attempt to do that. What it's going to do is it's actually going to kind of degrade your footage even more. And that's the kind of the problem with using the, well not really the problem, but the benefit to using the Lettuce Anamorphic Adapter is you're actually getting the best you can when you're in Super View mode from Super View mode. And we're just, we're losing a tremendous amount of the image and adding a lot of distortion we don't need. If you guys are interested in buying this lens, you're probably going to want to be familiar with the various field of view options you have with your GoPro. Now these are all the standard field of view options you have looking through your anamorphic lens on the left side how those would look and on the right it's how it would look with the normal GoPro Hero 3 lens. So this is without any type of correction effects, this is just straight out how your QuickTime files will look after you've recorded them with each lens. We'll go ahead and remove the standard fisheye distortion from the anamorphic lenses themselves and we'll keep the Hero 3 Plus blacks with the normal lens just the way they were shot. Once we have the fisheye removed, we're going to stretch the width by 1.33. That's just multiplying the width by 1.33 and that's how each of these sections will look. Now with Super View, you're not going to want to do that, otherwise you're going to stretch out your image. It's perfect the way it is in your 1080p format, and this gives us a little more wiggle room with the other formats when we actually lay it down in our comps. So for this next section, we're going to kind of look at this in reverse. This is a 1440p file that's been perfectly converted. We have our fisheye removed, we're perfectly stretched to 16 by 9. You know, this is the best the 1440p footage is going to look before color correction and all that jazz. But let's kind of see where we came from. So on the right here, we're going to have the 1440p footage as it was shot right out of the anamorphic lens footage. Now you can see we have the distortion in the upper left and right. We can see parts of the lens. You know, when you when you remove the fisheye, as you can see on the left, we lose a lot of that. And when we convert it, we don't even notice that. We get this nice sort of 16 by 9 image. We're going to do the same here with the 2.7K, the 16 uh, by 9 aspect ratio version. Again, this is your nice 16 by 9 plate at the end of your shot. Now we've scaled it down a little bit just so it fits into frame here. But it kind of gives you an idea of what kind of distortion you'll see in your final results. Now this is also a little blown up, so it's a little more distorted, but again, this is where we came from on the right. It doesn't look half bad, but again, it, it allows you to kind of manipulate your footage and have a little more control over it as opposed to just filming standard 2.7K. And again, these are both anamorphic lens uh, files. None of these are the normal GoPro Hero 3 lens. Let's break away into more practical 
results. Let's let's move the camera around and see what type of distortion we see along the side. Now if you look in the upper left, the raw lettuce anamorphic footage, you're going to notice that bar is very, very bent. And the same with the GoPro Hero 3 footage uh, normally. it's It's got this very distorted side bar. But if we take a look at after we converted all this footage, when we remove the fisheye and we properly stretch it out, those bars are going to seem a lot less distorted. That's a better straight line. It looks more natural. It looks more cinematic. And it's a much more appealing image, generally, in a cinema cinematography terms. And though, if you kind of hate that term, cinematography, it just it's basically allowing you to have more control and have more options. Like, you'll notice even, like, just the, the straight line at the bottom, we're still having a little bit of distortion, but that's kind of normal with an anamorphic lens. Sometimes you want that look. Sometimes you don't want the spherical, super fish eye look that comes out of a GoPro. And this just allows you to have more control over that. Now, we'll take a look on the, the left here. This is our perfectly converted frame. Like, we have so much information there to work with. If we were to drop this in a normal 1920 by 1080 comp, we can slide it over to the left and the right, and we'll have a lot more information with this little baby giraffe eating, you know? Again, here's another good example. You can look at those bars and how everything gets distorted as I pass by it, but you look at the big bar on the bottom and it's just, after we've done all that work, it looks really nice. But there are other little details you should kind of be aware of, such as when you're doing a lot of this stretching and, and removing a fisheye, you're actually warping around a lot, of, um, a lot of your detail. So your bushes and stuff like that, you're going to notice a lot of them might lose quality, they might lose sharpness, they might seem a little smudgy because they're being stretched and then pushed back and it can really take its toll on the footage. So in this area we are testing the various levels of distortion depending on their depth of field with the camera as we're spinning the camera left and right because normally when you film with a GoPro you're not always static and there's a lot of things moving in and out of frame. So this is going to give you kind of an idea of what to expect, but if you're looking at the raw lettuce adapter, as I kind of refresh it here, you're going to notice a lot of distortion near those edges. And we were seeing that earlier, but, you know, you are you can actually kind of see it in the GoPro Hero 3 wide. As we kind of get to the edges, you'll see the image kind of slightly stretch upwards, kind of like in a concave fashion. Now, once we have the footage all converted without the fisheye removal and we kind of stretch it with the anamorphic lens, we're not going to see a lot of that. We're losing a lot of the sides, but all those roof lines, they stay nice and straight. Now let's take a look with the super view here. One thing that was apparent in the last section that's much more apparent here is I kind of feel like I'm standing in the center of a hexagon and I'm projecting my footage forward and that when it reaches the center of the footage, it looks fine. But as it gets to the edge, I feel like the frames are kind of just like sort of bulging outwards and getting bigger. And that's much more apparent with the, the super view. Now, if you notice, like, things on the left and the right side of the screen, they just kind of stretch upwards in a concave fashion. And you have that with the normal wide footage. It's just much, much more apparent in the super view footage, and it's kind of a disadvantage when moving that camera around. So I went ahead here and did the conversion just to kind of show you guys what the stretched out image would look like. You can do this to your video if you want, but you're going to take a hit on quality. So here you're going to want to keep an eye on the roofs on the upper left and upper right. You're going to kind of want to see what we lose and gain in terms of distortion and lose in terms of field of view when we apply the fisheye removal correction and when we kind of do the proper 1.33 conversion stretch. And when it comes to 1440p footage, it's 4x3 aspect ratio. And when we try and convert that into a 16x9 aspect ratio, it's going to look very stretched out and incorrect. Now when GoPro Studio gets updated in the future, Converting 1440p footage should be fairly easy. Right now, I don't think I have this correct. If you know the proper way, shoot me a uh, comment in the, in the comment section. So filming with the anamorphic lens at night should be no different than how you normally film with the GoPro Hero 3 plus uh, with the normal lens at night. There's no real difference to color or anything like that other than image quality itself. Now, any color differences you see is kind of on my end in this video, but for the most part it should be the same experience you're having right now with your normal GoPro Hero 3 lens. The only big difference is really going to be how it handles light hitting the lens. Now when light hits an anamorphic lens it has a tendency to streak out because it's just being sort of stretched. Different lights are going to net you different results and it's going to take a lot of experimenting for me personally to figure out what type of lights kind of give you what type of results. Now when I was doing a lot of my tests, I was only really to uh, replicate it with um, certain types of street lamps and not so much LED lights. 
the horizontal lens flares are there. Uh, they just aren't as apparent and as easy to get as I kind of expected them to, which is both good and bad depending on how you feel about this, but when we're shining this LED right into the lens, I was expecting to be guaranteed a huge horizontal streak, and I didn't get anything. And I tried filming various light objects, and only a handful of them really netted these results, and even the ones that kind of did, it was very minimal compared to what my expectations were. Again, filming with the lettuce anamorphic lens is pretty much identical to filming with the standard GoPro Hero 3 lens in terms of nighttime quality. The GoPro isn't the best camera for nighttime. It's got a very small image sensor and that's kind of apparent in all action cameras and just something you should be aware of that these cameras, while okay in low light, aren't really the best camera for the job. So what do you guys think of Lettuce's Anamorphic X GoPro adapter? Is it too much money? Is it too much work? Is it the raddest tool for GoPro users out there? I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment in the section below. Uh, if you have a comment that's maybe too long, you can shoot me an email at markhawkcam at gmail.com. And of course, you can always show us the footage you've shot with your very own lens or any other camera over at reddit.com forward slash r forward slash helmet cameras. Again, like and subscribe. There's a ton of other videos we do weekly, so check them out. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.